name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, all God's people said. Amen. Father, we, we thank you for the word and we thank you for St. Paul who lived in a time of turmoil much like our own days. But St. Paul received the word of God to, to instruct the people. So may this written word be for us a lived word and may this lived word be for a spoken word and may this spoken word be for us a word that's truly alive in the power and the presence of your spirit. May we live it, may we understand it, and cause to celebrate it. In Jesus' precious name, amen. amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. This, uh, Sister Heaven okay. reminded me last week, I didn't tell you where uh, Corinth is. Corinth is in Greece. But back then they didn't call it Greece. What did they call it? Macedonia. The north of Greece is called Macedonia. The south is called Acacia. How many ever heard of Keisha? Yes. I, I love the way people pronounce Bible words. <laughs> my favorite word is the um, Samaria. That is my favorite all-time word. For S Samaria, they call it Samaria. <laughs> you, do you hear what I hear? Now, I do, I do listen. If you see me closing my eyes, I'm just inside going, oh. Okay. I, I don't correct them. I don't say anything after church to them. I said, Samariah. Because when you say Samariah, I just think of these little ninjas going. <laughs> okay, do, do you see the Samariah? You know, just the guy with the black hoods on and the, 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 the sticks. So, Paul now is in Corinth. It's a city port. You get W, W. You thought I was going to say F, right? Um, you get wine, women, and song. And song. You know, <laughs> That's where they started a hundred barrels of beer on the wall. <laughs> you take one down, you pass it around. You know, you ever heard that song out in Colorado? I mean, everyone's singing that song out in Colorado. <laughs> so, let's look at, so we're in, uh, the north is called Macedonia. You ever hear Macedonia? Yeah. Uh, and you can see the Serbia and everything else. And the south is called? Acacia. Acacia. So right now we're in Acacia. Let's see where that word is here. Here's Acacia. You ever see that word? Yes. Acacia. Now back in back in the day, and even to the, in our own day, there was a master disciple relationship. How many ever had your favorite clergyman? Nobody. <laughs> How many ever had your favorite nun? How many ever had a favorite teacher? How many ever had your favorite pet, your goldfish? I don't know what, did you like anything out there? So, we're going to see now what people do is they go to a person, but you gotta go to who? Jesus. Is that hard? But nobody was like them. In verse one, I appeal to you, brethren, uh, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree. Oh, do you think we're in all agreement? No. Tell me about an S. How do you spell that? What? Acacia. A C H A. A C H A. A. Acacia. Okay. Okay. So we're in Acacia. In the in, in, in the mid fifties, eighty. So I appeal to you. Now, now the first thing is that the Paul wants to plead with us. We we got to stop being disunified. Yeah. What's the main reason the church isn't growing? We're in a mess. Everybody's doing their own thing, right? right. Yeah. Did you discover that as we're on the way, does everybody's making up their own rules? Have you discovered that yet? Yeah. When I talk to people, how many know they're making up their own rules? Yeah. Well, I don't think this, and I don't think that. I said, I don't care what you think. What does God think on it? <laughs> right? Yeah. So he says there, so this is the appeal. And uh, he says there, I appeal to you. And if you circle the word appeal, the word, the word is, um, what a word, it's the word beseech. And here's the word in Greek, para kaleo. Anybody ever see a word in there? Paraclete. Paraclete. And every time in the Bible that there's the word appeal, you can see in Romans 12, I appeal to you. Paul would, it, it's the message always built on love. In, in uh, the book of Philemon, verses 8 and 9, there's no chapters in Philemon. He says, I appeal to you. Uh, or the word is beseech. When you want to talk about law, 
when you want to command, this is built on love. Law is built on demand. So Judaism is, is um, a religion of the law, right? And we've got to have our own laws too. And so we have, we have there the, the religion of love. And so love is, I appeal to you. So if you circle that there, right in parakaleo, and what word do you have in there in the Greek? You have? Paraclete. Now, everybody know what a paraclete is? It's someone who stands next to you. Someone who stands next to you. So what does the Holy Spirit mean? Someone who stands next to you. A para kaleo. What, let's break it down even more. Kaleo means you're called. Para means alongside of. So called alongside of. Remember all the exams that you took? How many ever called God in your midst? And you know what your favorite word was? Help! <laughs> Remember that word? So para kaleo, called alongside of. So that's that's the call. I beseech you, brethren. And remember, brethren, if you underline brethren, brethren is the word adelphos. And it literally means we're born from the same womb. That's why I'll only call you brother and sister. I will not call any people of other religions brother and sister. Did you know that? I'll call you brother and sister because we're all baptized in Jesus Christ, okay? So if I call you... Uh, uh, sister or brother, you know what I mean by that, okay? And then he says there, by the name of our Lord Jesus. Now, if you circle the word name there, the word, when you're in the name of somebody, you're in his mission. That's why we should never use Jesus' name in vain. So you're in the mission of Jesus. <coughs> so Paul says, I beg you, parakaleo, I beg you, by the name of our Lord, that all of you agree. Now, when you agree, you have to agree on two things when you start to really agree with God. Now this is going to be hard. Do you think we're all in agreement here? You don't think so? Let's, let's check out who the dissenter is in this room. <laughs> if we're all in agreement, you have to agree on doctrine and you have to agree on doctrine. How many of you all have the same doctrine here? What's our basic doctrine, church? The Apostles' Creed. Okay? Now, inside the Apostles' Creed, because we're apostolic church, inside the Apostles' Creed, how many teachings are there? Twelve. Very good. I answer my own questions and we stay happy. <laughs> now, how many know that differentiates us from being Catholic to being Protestant? There are twelve main beliefs. You can't say you don't believe one of them. If you don't, I can't force you to believe, can I? There are 12 apostolic teachings. If you don't believe one of them, you cease to be a Catholic. Did you know that? For example, I'll, I'll give you a hot button issue. You can't say, I don't believe there's a hell. Then you cease to be Catholic. Christian Whoa. too? Catholic Christian? Yeah. Because we believe that there is a real judgment. He's going to come to judge the living and the dead. And so all of this is apostolic teaching. See, in the Apostles, which is second century, there are 12 articles of faith that you, you got, you're required to believe. Now, I have encountered people all the time that they don't agree. There's no hell. In fact, 75% of the clergy today do not believe that there's a real hell. So what is the reluctance, Father? That's why you never hear it preached. But why? Because God is love. So what are you going to hear from the clergy today? Love, pussy willows, and balloons. You, 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 know, what, you know what I do inadvertently inside me? When someone starts preaching, and they start preaching on love, I start counting. One, two, and they love, love, love. Love. Does that do anything for anybody? Does, we're going we're to hear a section on love, and when we get to that section on love, how many know it's not going to be what you think it is? When we really, one guy says, Father Bill, I've got a problem with you. I said, oh, what is that one? The problem is you never preach on love. I said, you want me to? He said, yes, preach on love. So I preached on love at Mass, and he says, Father Bill, would you do me a favor? Never preach on love. <laughs> because he says, I don't do that. 
I don't love like you just said God says to love. I said, you're getting it. That's why I get upset when I hear love all the time. Because tell me what it really means. What it means is you lay down your life for people. How many here believe you really lay down your life for everybody in that church? Do you believe you really do that? Some of the people across the aisle, you can't stand them. <laughs> and if they dare give you the sign of peace, don't touch me, I'll sue. <laughs> right? Do you believe you really love? And by the way, if you don't really love, you can't go to communion. <coughs> How many go to communion? Everybody. Everybody. So, how many uncommunions are there? We're going to get into that in 1 Corinthians 11. We're going to get into the gifts of the Spirit. We're going to get into a good dose of morality here. I mean, Corinthians has everything in it. This is, this is like the whole faith. So, how many of us can say we're all the same in doctrine? Anybody have teenagers? Say you talk to a teenager or somebody from out west. Are they going to agree with you? What are they going to? What are they? They're going to have. Their, they're going to have their differences, aren't they? And when you hear them, you go. Anybody have kids? What, what What have they told you? How many of some of your kids don't agree with your the teachings of the Word of God? How many know that? And you just shake your head. And think of the. And you're, you say, Bobby, I thank God they still go to church. But they they don't agree with the teachings. And then because they can find their own gurus out there. Right now, I can tell you. Go any church you want, you can find a clergyman who will agree with you. But how many want the truth? The truth that will set you free. Mm -hmm. When you hear the truth of the gospel, it'll go against your grain. Mm -hmm. Because why? It's a hard word. Jesus says in John chapter 6, the reason why they defected against and the greatest defection we know of is because Jesus gave them a hard word. And he wasn't going to kowtow to them. So you have all these people leaving. Yes? Yes, one question, Father. My kids went to St. Mary's. And okay. so on tomorrow day. Yes. Do you think part of the reason kids today yes. that don't believe, so to speak, or have a hard time believing, is because they're not being instructed properly? They're not being. School? Yes, I think that's that's a reason. The sad thing is, I shouldn't tell you what I say. Very <laughs> good. The sad thing is, you could be a teacher fresh out of college. And we need a teacher, and you got high credentials. And all of a sudden we say, here, you teach them, you're, you're a fourth grade teacher, welcome, thank you for coming. Now here's the religion book, now teach them. Wait a minute, it takes a little more than that. You've got to be a person of character. I'm not saying, you, I'm sure all our people are, are good people, but you've got to be a person of faith. So you just can't get up there and teach it as an academic course. And basically, I think the biggest reason is there is it's not in the home. The majority of parents are just saying, I'm sending you to a Catholic school, they'll give it to you. No, 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 no. I gotta give it to you. But they have relegated their teaching to a school and saying they got it, and so there I paid mega thousands of dollars. You send them to Catholic colleges and they come out atheist. <laughs> But, but it's the parents. And you know who the responsibility is? The father's duty. Deuteronomy 6. You've got to make sure your kids understand the faith. So get those two kids while they're still young. Or you're going to lose them. Yes? Um, I did not go to Catholic school. But we went to CCD classes on a Wednesday night. And the teacher did not know her faith. She, they don't know their faith. A lot of them. So it was just... You just want to cry. All right, the set, the, the, um, let, let me show you. Go, go to Philippians 3. Hold your spot. Go to Philippians. Who wrote Philippians? Paul. Paul. Okay, good. just turn the pages a little bit. Go eat popcorn, Galatians, Ephesians, <laughs> Philippians. Go eat popcorn. Okay, that, that's how I memorize all of these things here. Go to Philippians chapter 3, verse 16. If we're going to be unified, chapter 3, verse 16. <laughs> Chapter, chapter 3, verse 16. If we're going to be united, here's what Paul says in, in Philippians 3, 16. Only let us hold true to what we have attained. Hold true. There's got to be a body of truth. Don't you need to know that? So anybody coming into the church, you have to have the apostolic witness. You have to experience the whole thing. Do you, do you all agree? So if we are a body here, if we're going to affect the rest of the world, we all got to agree on the Apostles' Creed. 
I'm not going to say to you, all right, how many believe there's a hell? All right, you don't? Okay, very good. Liberal? Okay, over there. Oh, conservative? All right. There can be no voting. And then, then today, with all the hot button uh, immo um, morality issues, well, I, I think this person was born that way. When the Bible is clear on teachings. So, well, then, then what do we got to say? The Bible's not the Bible then. And then we open another and see what we're doing. So how many think there's unity? And then what are you going to do? I'm going to go to a church where they accept that. I've been in a situation, a precarious situation, where people knocked on my door. My mother told me to come to you. I said, all right, welcome. And I know the answer, and I really don't want to talk to you. I said, well, goodbye. <laughs> no, i got to answer my question, but I really don't want to talk to you. I mean, how many know I really felt welcome in my own church having her sit next to me? And she proceeded to tell me who she was and what she believed in. Now, give me your answer. I don't really want to hear it. I said, well, I won't tell you. No, tell me. <laughs> Do you see what i got to put up with in life? Do you got to see what i got to go through? And I told her, she says, I'm out of here. Goodbye. I said, i got to call sin, sin. Okay? So Paul says in Philippians 3.16, to what you have attained, this is doctrinal truth. Now the second, the second thing he says, if we're going to be agreed, the second thing is that we've got to be agreed on making decisions. The, these are the two things that if we're going to do, uh, for example, how many ever heard of a mother and a father before? Don't your kids play off of each of you? Say, do your grandchildren play off of you? How many of, how many of the kids have psychology down to a... Uh, uh, you know, they, they just have it down, okay? They have it down that they play off of each other to get what they want, don't they, right? So how many brothers and sisters know, but that can't be, there's got to be a uniform decision. That's why, thanks be to God, uh, there, there are some great Catholic colleges out there like Steubenville and Christendom and everything else. They make uh, people sign an oath to the Holy Father and to the teaching magisterium of the church. How many ever heard of Catholic University? It's called the Pontifical University where they're asked to teach Catholic teaching only. I went to Seton Hall University. Anybody ever hear of that university? They, they don't teach theology there. They teach religious studies. What's the difference? Religion. Theology means you're going to hear the Catholic truth. Religion. religion means I can give you my opinion. I don't want opinion. I'm a young man, 18, 19, 20 years. Give me the teaching. Right. And right now, when our kids go to Catholic uh, or, or secular universities for religion, I just shake inside because th uh, there's a lot of opinion. I want truth. And so if, when Paul says we got to agree, it's got to be on truth, the doctrine, and the making of decisions. Then he says there, and, and, and how many names? That there be no dis dissensions among you. Now, the, the word for dissension, if you underline the word dissension, is schismata. You ever hear that word? Yeah, yeah you got it. That there be no schismata among you. <coughs> what word do you see in that? Schism. 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 If we're going to get this precious gospel around the world, we've got to be, uh, you know... Uh, uh, we all got to be pro-life. That's not an option to be a Catholic. Well, let others do it. No, we all got to do it. No. Uh, you know, I've been cursed out on pro-life lines. Isn't it great? <laughs> One guy drove by, I'm doing pro-life work, and he says, you! Me? I'm holding a, a sign for abortion. He says, you! And he looked at me, I'm dressed like this, a good looking guy. And he says, you! <laughs> and he says, and he rolls down his window, get a job! <laughs> I said I'm on the unemployment line right now. You know? So I, I was yelled at to get a job. So, so, so there, there, there's got to there's got to be a uniformity of belief. So we should never say to one another, "You're pro-choice." How can you be pro-choice? Amen. You know, some of these politicians. My only dream before I die is to pray over their head once. <laughs> That's kind. I'll be very kind right now. I'll just pray over their head once too. <laughs> because they, they call themselves Catholics and they're these politicians, right? Why aren't they pro-life? Okay? So he says there, so, now what does schismata mean? Schism
schismata means two things. Number one, it, it means the um, tearing of a garment. Schismata means tearing of a garment. But it also means, um, schismata means difference of opinion. When I first did Bible study at the age of 18, we would sit in a circle, read a passage, and go around the room saying, what do you think it means? What do you think it And that was nice. That's called Bible sharing. But I like meat and potatoes. Do you like meat and potatoes? I need to know the meat and potatoes. And the first night, there was 35 people there, and I was really thrilled. And then it dropped down to like three. I, I knew we were in trouble then. I, I knew that people weren't real. Because I, I, I want to know what the Word of God says to me. So we, we have too much schismata, the tearing of the garment. Okay? And what happens when you, when you tear your garment? Can you wear the clothes? No. And then a difference of opinion. God is not asking anybody in this room for your opinion. No opinions, please. Okay? Do you want to offer opinions to God? I do. But he doesn't want to hear them. Because God knows he's God. Okay? And I thought maybe he has a bad day and he'll change his mind. It's not going to work like that. And um, if you go with me to 1 Thessalonians... Uh, about no divisions. Do we have divisions in the church today? We do. Are there lots? Yes. Yes. You, you, you know what? I, I I listen to you guys. And you guys out in the pews, you're talking a whole lot out there. And how many know that every day I make your dinner tables? Uh, I do. <laughs> You know, I said, you know, my ear's itching. Somebody's talking about me again. First uh, Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 12. And, and there, you, there you can see again, First Thessalonians 5, verse 12. You can see the word parakaleo, I beseech you. See that word there? And that's the love word that Paul uses. First Thessalonians 5, 12. I beseech you, brethren, to respect those who labor among you and over you in the Lord and admonish you to esteem them very highly in love because of their work. Be at peace among yourselves. So what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to honor those who labor for us. And we exhort you, brethren, verse 14, admonish the idle, encourage the faint heart, help the weak, be patient with them all. I mean, it's hard to be patient with everybody because if I don't become patient with you, I become a patient. <laughs> See that none of you repays evil for evil, but always seek to do good to one another. So what are we supposed to do? Look, look at the word beseeching. How do you say beseech in Greek? Parakaleo. I beg you, stand alongside of. And, and, and that's how to get, what? The right decisions. The right decisions. If, and when you have... And here's the purpose of agreeing. The purpose of agreeing. I, we all believe in the same thing. Right? Everybody, hopefully, let's do a test. Everybody, uh, this is all I'm going to ask you tonight. Everybody agree with the Apostles' Creed? Yes. yes. And by the way, on Sunday, what's it called? The Nicene Creed. That's in 325. And that's where we got the Trinity, the word <coughs> Trinity. Do we always believe in the Trinity? Yes, but it was crystallized in a term. So when you have the Colts walk in the street tomorrow, they're visiting your house, I'm sure, they'll say there's no such thing as the Trinity. It was a church-invented word. No, the truth has always been there, and we put a title on what we believe called Trinity. It's clearly in the Scriptures, Matthew 28. Go baptize everybody in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Notice they each have the word, the name, the name, the name. Three. Okay? It doesn't say baptize them in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It's the name of the Father, the name of the Son, and the name of the Holy Spirit. So there is clearly, well, and we call that Trinity. St. Athanasius gave his life and was exiled so many times, even by the church. My heavens, did he have a rough beginning? So we've got to have correct doctrine and we've got to have correct order. Because without order, there's going to be chaos in, in our pews. Welcome to church today. Now, look, look what he says here. But you be united, back with me to um, Corinthians 1. Be united in mind and the same judgment. Oh, my heavens. How many think we all have the same mind here? <laughs> now, let me break this down for us some more. You've got to have two things that match. If we're going to be a church that's on fire with God, you gotta have a mind. Anybody have a mind? Yeah. And you gotta have a mouth. Anybody have a mouth? Yeah. I know you're all talking out there. I know you're talking. Your mind is your interior. Your mouth is your exterior. 
Your mind is your interior, your mouth is your exterior. Now we're going to find out something absolutely phenomenal. I, I was just sharing with people last night that everybody here is a unique translation of the New Testament. You know, you're all unique translations of the New Testament. Is that a great line? <coughs> Nobody translates the New Testament quite like you. But we all have the same basis. The Apostles' Creed, the Word of God, the teachings of the Church. That's why we have the magister, the, the teachings of the Church, which we're asked to obey. Now, there are moments I, I have to obey the second part, the decision-making. I may not be in agreement with the decision-making, but because it's not contrary to what I believe, i got to go along with it, okay? Because inside of me, there's a, some fighting still going on. So I've got to make sure that my mind, and th this, is, this is a good point, when you walk with Jesus Christ, you can't know the mind of the person next to you. This is a mind-blowing statement. You can't know the mind of the person next to you. You can't know her mind, but you can know his mind. Isn't that amazing? I don't know your mind, but I do know his mind. Amen. We're going to learn more about that. Isn't that a mind blowing statement? Mm. By the way, I, sometimes I don't want to know your mind because <laughs> <laughs> that's why old men wear hats. I'll tell you that much, right? You know, what's, what's inside those hats. So Paul says there, mind and underline the next thing, and your judgment. Now, when you have mind and judgment together, it, it, it teaches us. Um, it teaches us, if you go with me, make a left, go to Acts, a lot of, a lot of Bible today. Go to Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4, look at verse th uh, 31. Hmm? Acts chapter 4, verse 31, 32. Now, when they're all gathered together, are we all gathered together? Yes. When they all, they all pray, do we all pray together? Yes. Oh, keep it short. We we'll love you. <laughs> get me out. I got to go Dunkin' Donuts. Come on, get me out. And besides, keep the mask quick because I don't want to wait in line for Red Lobster. Let's go here. Do you hear what I hear? <laughs> and that lady never sends me a Christmas card. <laughs> when they had prayed, verse 31, the place in which they were gathered together, see, gathered together, was shaken. How many would like this place to be shaken? And they were, they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. I am dying for that this church gets everybody filled with the Holy Spirit filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the word of God with boldness. That means you're ready to stand up and belt it out. Belt it out, okay? Uh, when my mother was being willed in for a cancer operation, and she was successfully had a cancer operation, and the doctor said, do you like what I did for you? She said, you didn't do it. <laughs> and he looked at her like, I didn't do it. She said, Jesus did it. <laughs> he ran out very quickly. He wasn't going to fight my mother. <laughs> And so they spoke the word of God with all boldness, parousia. They spoke, they, that means they weren't afraid. And then verse 32, now the company of those who believed, oh, 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 okay. look, it happened before. Wouldn't it be great if it happens again today? Hint, hint, hint. They were one heart and soul. Now watch this. What does heart and soul mean? Heart means we're all in the same on the emotional plane. <clears throat> How many like us all to be emotionally stable? <laughs> a pleasant thought. They're not stable. They're not stable at all. And then it says soul. What is the soul? Your thoughts. How many would like to have a flow of holy thoughts going right through here? So you've got to be more in a mind that we're all, our emotions are together. And then also it, you have your thoughts all together. How many know that's the body of Christ? Now... What, what thrills me to know is it happened before and it can happen again. Now, we're learning what Pope Benedict XVI says, the church is in a crisis. Have you realized that yet? Yes. And what, we're going, what you're going to see happening is we're going to lose a lot of people. And what, what's going to happen, this is what Pope Benedict XVI says, and I fully agree with him. He says we're going to get smaller. 
we're going to see, sadly, a lot of people leave. A lot, maybe your, your beloveds. I hope that doesn't happen. But a lot of you are saying, it's, it's, they're not going to church. They're just not going at all. We're going to lose them. But you and I who believe, we're going to stay in there, and we're going to meet, and we're going to have church the way it should be. And then we're going to have to form a new unity in the power of the Spirit, and then again, people will start to come back when they see that we're together. When they see the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, how long is that going to take? I don't know. But, I mean, when you think years, so Father Bill, I've got many years to live. I'm going quick. So, that's what's happening. I think that's, Benedict the Sixteenth says that's the plan. Back with me to First Corinthians. So there should be no schismata among you. You see schismata? No tearing of the garments. We should be mind and the same judgment. And I say judgment, crino. And K-R-I-N-O, crino. We should be in the same judgment. We should all call sin, sin here. If I said this is a sin, that's a sin. And you shouldn't say, oh, I, I disagree with that. Well, this is the Word of God. We're here for one purpose tonight, to hear the Word of God. What does God say on it? And I can't compromise the Word of God because I like you and I want to be popular. I have to give up, and I have given up a lot of popularity with people to... Um, and th that's a reason why I'm right with you right now, because I gave up some popularity. Because they, some people didn't want to hear it. Because I know my judgment day, James 3, is going to be more severe than all of yours. Maybe combined, I don't know. And I want to say to God, I told them, Lord, let me in. Yes. I was going to say, with that uh, thing you were just saying about the church is going to get smaller, but those of us, the remnant that are here, are going to be the true believers. Yes. It's going to be the joy in us that's yes. going to drive us. And then they'll start to come back. Right. Now, so if you want to get a pulse on the Holy Spirit, that's what's happening right now. When you look out at Sunday, I estimate in a church like this, I estimate every weekend there should be 17,000 people <coughs> who come to our church. 17,000. Do we see 17,000? No. You know how many come? I would estimate about 3,300. So 17,000 down to 3,300, that's not a lot of people, is it? Now, are people signing up? Every, you'll be proud. Every week there's more people coming into this church. But when that's translated into action, where are they? They're not here. So what do they think? Are, they, are we the same in doctrine? No. Are we the same in practice? No. A, a, a third thing could be, from a Catholic level, is what is called praxis. Praxis is the Latin word for practice. Practice. Praxis, practice. So we should all be practicing and walking the same walk with God. Are we? No. No. Back with me to 1 Corinthians 1. For it has been reported to me by Cho, Cho, uh, Chloe's people that there is quarreling among you. And this quarreling is, I mean, they were really going at it. They were really fighting with one another. Whoa. Uh, quarreling with one of my, my brethren. What I mean that each of you says, I belong to Paul. I belong to Apollos. I belong to Cephas. Or I belong to the Christ. Now, this, this is a great group of people. <laughs> Everyone here wants their own guru. Everybody wants their own leader. This is going to make me special. Now, here's the order. Look at, look at those people. We believe um, Paul is the founder of this church. He stayed in Corinth 18 months. Then uh, the next person that comes along was uh, Chloe. Chloe was um, a prominent person from Ephesus. The quarrels mean they were really fighting. They were really going on. I mean, they were yelling at each other. So it's a very heavy word that they were... Uh, and don't we see that in, in... I've been in churches where I invited... I always invite people to Bible study because I, I think everybody should know the Word of God. I went up to one lady once in a local church well, the local church I was at said, uh, Mrs. Jones, that's her, not her name, I don't want to use any names. Mrs. Jones, why don't you join us for Bible tonight? She says, no! And then Mrs. Jones comes by, and I was downstairs um, with a small group of people, and she shoved the bulletin in my face, almost this close, and said, Father Bill, we're here, now get out. And I said, I know of your presence coming. I will be leaving. And of course, 
My anger rose in me, and in Christian love, I wanted to punch her lights out. <laughs> <laughs> Did I? No, I did not. I, I just... So when, when I said to her, come to Bible study, she was arrogant. No, I'm not coming. I'm not coming. And by the way, when people says, I'll try to get there, that's the way of them saying, lay off me, I'm not coming. Amen. That's why I despise when you say, I'll try. You're not, that means you're not coming. That means you won't bother me anymore because I said I'll try. A a amen? Yes. Okay. Are, are you getting the psychological gist? How many of the Holy Spirit gave me a degree in psychology? <laughs> by the Holy Spirit. Okay. okay. And uh, so now Chloe, so Chloe is, um, Chloe there is the prominent person from Ephesus. And the, the next person there is um, Apollos. Apollos is the second pastor of Corinth. He's the second pastor of Corinth. Now, there's a debate whether he wrote the book of Hebrews, by the way. There's a big debate. Was it Paul, Barnabas, or, um, or Apollos? So, those are the three. And the early church fathers swing towards St. Paul. I do too, because okay. there's too much similar writing in the... Too much similar writing. But people say it's not St. Paul because of the Greek. So, when you hear uh, uh, Hebrews mentions as a letter to the Hebrews. Okay? Everybody got this? And then, of course, um, Kephas, well, that's the, how many know that's the original name of who? Peter. Peter. Now, the word Kephas means the rock, right? Mm -hmm. Does everybody know Peter was the first Peter ever called Peter by Jesus? Nobody was called Peter before Jesus called Peter, Peter. Mm -hmm. Huh? <laughs> Don't go back. <laughs> Don't do it again. Okay, you got that? <laughs> so the name didn't exist? It didn't exist, no. So Jesus, you're, you're the only ones on your block that know this. So Peter was the first Peter called Peter by Jesus. Can you see the uniqueness of who he is now? And that's in Matthew uh, chapter 16, verse 18, 16, 17, 18. You are upon this rock, I'll build my church. And, and that's another great teaching. I've got a lot more information for you on that. So um, Peter, Peter, so now you got these, you got these four groups of people and they can't stand each other. Can you imagine? Love. You know today's sermon is love. So you preach on love. I'm going to preach on love until you get it. Love. <laughs> so now, look at these four groups of people coming to church. And, and I've been in churches where, where one group can't stand the other group. Have you seen that? Yes. Yep. They can't stand one another. Yes. And when they, and of course, when they got the calendar for rooms, this is our room tonight. Get out of here. I've got to take up the crucifix and go back. 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 Somewhere over the rainbow. Back. Back. Uh, I mean, do you see what I see? I've been at this for 32 years now. You know, Holy Spirit, pray. So now, what group do you want to be? I belong to Paul. He's the first founder. Oh, oh, oh. I, I belong to the present day family of Apollos. Oh, okay. Oh, but I go back to the first apostle, Peter. Well, I did one better than that. I go back to Christ. Oh. So who are the ones that say Peter? Peter, they say, I'm the original. Aren't these great people? The others say, Christ, I am just so pious, I glow in the dark. <laughs> so you have all these people in church. How many know you meet, you meet them all? And you know, now that this pastor left, there's nobody like him. And so you take the present day pastor, and say, oh, I don't like him, I like the other one. Why did they take him away? Psalm Right? Do you hear that? Yes, you do. Yes, you do. It's all at the new mammoth. You hear them all talking right there. And uh, amen. And you know why I go in the new mammoth? I told you so they can treat me to dinner. So um, they're all there. Oh, here he is. Here he is. Let's dinner. I'm having dinner. You want to treat me? Okay. So here they for now. What does this produce? This produces in the body of Christ called a thing called carnality. Your flesh takes over. Mm -hmm. You cannot say you belong to anyone except Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Now, you know reality of life. 
priests, deacons are going to come and they're going to go. Right now, a wave came in and God dropped me on the shore for a while. But the wave's going to come out and say, time to go out. I'll be sailing along on the ocean of life. Off I go, right? Same with everybody. So my job is to share the word of God the best I can. So notice that division there. You got all the division? You got who they are? Chloe was what? He was a prominent member. Who's the next one there? Paul, who was Paul the first pastor? Who's the next one? Apollos, he was the second pastor. Kepha is the original name. Remember what language did Jesus speak, everybody? Aramaic. Aramaic. The Pope was uh, uh, sparring with uh, Netanyahu recently. And he said Jesus spoke Hebrew. And the Pope quickly quibbed Aramaic. <laughs> uh, did you catch that? Yeah. Uh, the Pope is correct. He spoke Aramaic. And when I was there with Jewish guides in Israel, I get a little... Uh, when I listen to them, I think I counted my last visit. Uh, they're wonderful guides, don't get me wrong. But I got four incorrect teachings that the people received. I said, no, 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 no. So I said four times, no, 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 no. So I had to sit up front because I was a leader of a bus, you know. You know, like the Girl Scouts have their leaders, I had to lead the bus. And, you know, and so I'm hearing this guy and I went, no, 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 that's not Catholic belief. No, 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 no. So I had to kind of not embarrass. No, 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 no. So I, I didn't want to upset him, but I had to get him together in the lobby and sit down and have a cup of coffee with him. So that's not what we believe. So now he, Paul goes on to say there, verse 13, is Christ divided? That's why we should never war over my church is better than your church. My church is better than... Like we have spies from other Catholic churches here. Welcome. <laughs> because Ephesians chapter 4 says, One Lord, one faith, one baptism. There's only one. So I, I welcome everybody. Even if you're from a different uh, Christian church, welcome. If you're not Christian, welcome. Was Paul crucified for you? Now, you can see the battle lines drawn in John chapter 1 when John the Baptist was raising his group and he says, Behold the Lamb of God! Behold Him who takes away the sin of the world. Notice he said the singular sin. Yeah. It's, all the it's, it's everything in compass. And what did John say? Go to Him! And they said, No, we like you! It's like dropping off a kid in kindergarten and they get Miss C for their teacher. <laughs> and they said, All right, Go ahead. No. No. And they look at her. No! <laughs> and they run back into the arms of the mom. Remember the first day of kindergarten? They all cry and they carry on and they scream. And <laughs> Mothers, did you ever do that with your kids? <laughs> Go ahead. You're 35. Go ahead. <laughs> I mean, any mothers there yet? You, you know, the, some of you, how many are going to have your kids? Day after day, month after month, decade after. They're not going to leave because they like their cooking. Okay. <laughs> Paul crucified for you, or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I am thankful that I, I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius. Now, Paul was not a baptizer. Does that surprise you? Paul was a what? A preacher. Roman says he's a preacher to the what? Gentiles. Mm -hmm. So he, he's out there preaching. Now, uh, how many know that Jesus hardly baptized anybody? Did you know that in John chapter 4? Did Jesus only baptized a certain group of people. Who were they? The apostles. That's all Jesus baptized. So when Jesus got his baptism, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the... I wonder how Jesus baptized them. Did he mention the Trinity? I don't think so. I wonder how he baptized them. Now, baptism was a sign of getting spiritually cleansed. You see, when John the Baptist says, Oh, you brood of vipers. How many know he didn't get Christmas cards that year? <laughs> you don't call people snakes. And you know what a viper is? What, a viper is a snake that eats its babies. <laughs> that's, that's why John called... Um, so John was calling the Pharisees a bunch of 
uh, people that eat their babies up. You got, you got the religious significance? Your faith is so bad that your kids can't even get it right. Whoa. That's what, that's what he means by brood of vipers. Very, was he strong? Yes. How many want to meet him? <laughs> I got him on my list when I go to heaven to meet him. I'm going to have a good long talk with John the Baptist. <laughs> so what, what happened is Jesus got baptized. And then who did he baptize? John chapter 3, John chapter 4. Where there was a lot of water, there was baptism going on. Remember Anon? A-E-N-O-N? N-O-N? That's where Jesus baptized them. He baptized the apostles and never baptized anybody else. Interesting, isn't it? The, what does the word baptize mean? It means to be immersed in. So who were you immersed in? Paul crucified or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I am thankful I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius. Lest anyone should say that you're baptized in my name. So Paul didn't want to say, you know who baptized me? Paul. Oh. Am I baptized or what? Paul. <laughs> now, what would happen if I said to you, which didn't happen, the Pope ordained me? What would you think? You're so special. How many know we're into name throwing around? Mm -hmm. Paul didn't say, I don't want any name throwers around. Right? I am prominent in the Christian church. I don't want you to throw my name around that I baptize you. It says, the only two I got, I got down is Gaius. And Crispus. You, you got this? How many know? How many have heard name throwers in the church? Can I tell us? Uh, and, and does that make you feel extra special? I'm honored that people throw my name around. You know Father Bill? <laughs> really? <laughs> my mother knows him and says, my, my personal mother knows him and says, one is enough. <laughs> yes. But all the apostles had that problem, Father. Didn't they, weren't they uh, the ones that had to correct? They were starting to be worshipped in themselves. That's right. And they had to constantly warn people, I am not God. Right. So, yeah. is it going to be hard to do? Stop saying you're a name. Stop name throwing. Is that going to be hard to do? I know him. <laughs> I know him. Whoo! I know him. Uh, I, I have friends that their name is Dolan, and they met Cardinal Dolan. And they said, you're our cousin, so take a picture so we can tell everybody. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Just because you got a picture with somebody? Okay. I, I'm thankful. Uh, he says, lest anyone underline there, verse number 15, say that you were baptized in my name. I did also, and, and, and look at verse 16. He kind of remembers, um, I, I also baptized, um, yeah. verse number 16, the household of Stephanus. Now, the Greek word for household... The Greek word for household is oikos. <coughs> like the yogurt? <laughs> yes, they were eating yogurt that day. <laughs> Greek yogurt. Greek yogurt, the oikos, that's right. It's, I, I don't like yogurt sometimes. So, so they, they were the oikos, and what it means is the church. It's the, one of the first names for the church. Now, when I go to your house, am I going to have church in your house? <coughs> Some of you have never invited me over because you don't want me to see what you see. <laughs> Do you see what I see? So what's your first church? It's your house. Is your house holy? Or is it loud? Do I know that Christ is present in your house? Or will I have to look and get a Holy Spirit detected? <laughs> so what does Paul say there I did also baptize the household of Stephanus now what does Stephanus mean in Greek the crowned one then he says there beyond that I do not know whether I baptized anyone else Paul says yeah I baptized Gaius and Crispus oh yeah and, and also Stephanus but that's all does that surprise you about the apostle Paul what was his mission preach. to preach he knew what God called I gotta get the word of God out. I gotta get it to the Gentiles because he one, one day for, for uh, he's the first Catholic Jesuit. He was out looking at the scriptures and he studied the Bible for 14 years in the desert of Arabia. He came across finally Isaiah 49. They didn't have chapter and verse, remember? The chapters were added in 1220 AD. The verses were added in 1550 AD. 
the Jews, by the way, took, took it and copied it. They liked the Catholic system. How many of the Catholics put the numbers in? And how many of the Catholics put the titles on top of the Bible? Does everybody know that? And how many of people copied that after us? Interesting. 393, 397 AD, we, we put all the books together. Did you know that? And so, uh, and people copied us and now they call it their Bible. Interesting. Very interesting. So, um, here, here, Paul says, I don't remember who I baptized. For Christ, on line verse 17, did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel. Now, the word preach, the Greek word is kariso. Kariso. Now, you get an expression from kariso, you get a word in there called charismatic. Are we all charismatic? Yes. What's a charismatic? Christ has died. Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Are you all charismatic? Yes. Do you all got to believe that? Do we have a uniform of belief here? Yes. Yes, we all believe that Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. It comes from the word kariso. Kariso means to shout out, to proclaim. So that's why preaching is different from teaching. It should be stir you up with the word of God, make you, cause you to think with a conviction of the Spirit, not a condemnation, but with a conviction of the Spirit to say, I need to grow and change in the Spirit. So verse 17, but um, I didn't come with elegant wisdom. What was the wisdom there? The, how do you say wisdom in Greek? Sophia. I didn't. How many, how many ever heard of girls called Sophia? The new words for the kids are, are is, uh, Sophia. And the other one is popping up is Zoe. Zoe. Okay, Sophia means wisdom. Now, here's wisdom. The ability to say and do the right thing. I didn't come with you. Now, what does Paul mean there? I didn't come with you for the wisdom. Because what town was he in? He's in, he's in Acacia. He's in Greece. What are they doing? They have all these philosophers. In Acts chapter 17, he goes to the Areopagus where the guys are stroking their beards. Paul's talking about the resurrection. Some laughed and some believed. And so they said, what a preposterous doctrine you have that someone would rise from the dead. So a lot of laugh because they couldn't figure it out. Because the wisdom of that day was, you've got to figure it out and how wise you are. St. Augustine had unbelievable earthly wisdom. And he could wrap around circles around anybody. But when he, he, he uh, met a man called Ambrose... And when he met Ambrose, Ambrose had a little more wisdom because he had the power of the Holy Spirit. And Monica saying, please get him, Holy Spirit, get him, 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 get him. And she prayed for all those years, as you know the story. And finally, what captured his imagination when Ambrose says, you're after truth, but the truth is after you. The truth is Jesus Christ. And so when Ambrose said that to him, he could never get that out of his mind. And so when he's walking the streets of Milan, he fell down and he just appeared in front of Ambrose and basically said, baptize me because truth has captured my heart. And you know that expression, late have I loved thee. Mm -hmm. Late have, and then he became one of the greatest uh, saints ever in the church. And uh, we, we use his wisdom. So this here, if you, if you look at that eloquent wisdom, that's the wisdom of the day. Now, what's the wisdom of the Holy Spirit? Um, if you go with me to James. Who wrote James? James. James, you're very smart. <laughs> now, what's the wisdom of, of God? Go with me to James 3. Go towards it. Make a right. Okay, James chapter 3. I always say you're wise if you know how to get to heaven. You're not wise if you don't know how to get to heaven or on the path there. Here's what wisdom is from above. James chapter 3, verse 17. But the wisdom from above, James 3, 17, is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, open to reason. And by the way, that's a very Catholic response. When we talk to other Christians, you've got to use your reason. You've got to enter in with your whole mind, right? 
full of mercy and good fruits, without uncertainty or insincerity. And the harvest of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. That's wisdom from above. Okay, James 3.17. Back with me to 1 Corinthians. So Paul says, I don't have this eloquent wisdom. I'm not marching through the Areopagus. Acts 17. I'm not walking, walking through. He says, lest the cross of Christ be emptied in its power. So the cross of Christ is never based on the world's wisdom. That's why our college professors are telling our kids right now in the United States of America, they're telling the kids to leave your parents' religion. Because it's all a bunch of stories and myth. Because they're making fool of the man, Jesus, who died on the cross. So they're blaspheming the Virgin Mary. They're blaspheming, they're, they're making Jesus out on all these plays. And they're mocking Jesus. And they're messing, they're messing from the, from the um, singers out there. And we won't mention all their names, you know who they are. They're mocking the cross of Jesus Christ. And they're using the cross of Jesus Christ as some jewelry object. And they are committing unbelievable blasphemies. And I believe they're on the verge of committing the sin against the Holy Spirit, which will not be forgiven. Now, I didn't say they committed it, but they're on the verge of, of, of blaspheming who Jesus is. You can be forgiven, but don't blaspheme the Holy Spirit. And some of these... So, look, look, look now at verse 18. When we look at these verses, what is, what is our clarion call? It's the cross, okay? The cross. For the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing. How many ever heard somebody that's mocking the cross, what are they doing? They don't believe in a cross. Now, we're gonna, we're, gonna meet, we're gonna meet a word there, it's called foolish. The word foolish in Greek is moros. Yeah, morons. <laughs> Now here's the call on our life. And this is going to be very hard for you and me. You've got to decide even tonight. Are you going to be a fool for Jesus Christ or not? And if you're going to be a fool for Jesus Christ, people are going to mock you. That's ridiculous. How can you believe that? How can you believe that about marriage? Don't you understand? You're going to stand in such opposition... And you're going to be that fool. It's all because of the cross of Jesus Christ. So look at verse 18. For the word of the cross. Now, now notice it, what, what it says there. The word of the cross. Isn't that an interesting term? The word of the cross. Have you heard that expression about the cross before? The word of the cross? The message of the cross. The message of the cross, right. The gospel of the cross. Mm -hmm. And this is what we got to preach. I made it my, um, my life's preaching to always mention the power of the cross. I always like, I, I try to get in every talk or so, one mention, you just hear me giving a little, and the cross. It's like, well that doesn't, you, maybe I'm preaching on some word, and so why did you just all of a sudden mention the cross? Because it's the word of the cross. It's the message of the cross. It's the power of the cross. So now, now Paul says, this is what I preach. This is, I, I don't go about baptizing. I don't go about setting up more divisions in the church. This is our focus. So verse 18 down to the end of chapter 1 is our focus. Uh, our focus is uh, to those who are perishing. Now, perishing, if you underline perishing, you heard yesterday John 3.16. God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Whoever believes in Him should not what? Perish, but have everlasting life. The word perishing means utterly destroyed. There is, brothers and sisters, a real heaven... And there is a real hell. Mm -hmm. Here's what Jesus says. The way to heaven is... The way to hell is... What are you hearing in the church today? The way to heaven is... Why? And there's probably will be no hell. That's a false gospel. That's why there's no urgency of telling anybody else. Because if I preach love, pussy willows and balloons. And I believe everybody's going to heaven. Why do I mention to you? I will not mention to you there is a real hell. Did you notice that? You should never be in a church 
year after year after year after year after never hear one preaching on hell. I'll let you a clue. When it's not preached, it's not believed in. You got it? So, for me, I need to hear the full gospel. Do you want to hear the full gospel? This is the word of the cross. It is folly to those who are perishing, but to those of us who are being saved, it's the power of God. That's the same thing in Romans 1.16. Romans 1.16. I preach the wisdom and the power of God, the dunamis. This is the power of God to save. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the cleverness of the clever I will thwart. All right. Who is the wisdom of the wise? Who, who, who's, who are those people? Philosophers. They're the philosophers of the dead. Those are the people that say, we don't have to worry about Christ and the cross. The cleverness of the clever I will thwart. Please don't be impressed with a person's degrees. People would say to me, how should we introduce you when I was giving a talk around the country? Just say, here's Father Bill. I have all my degrees. What does that mean to heaven? Zero. I have all my theolo theology. Zero. Being a priest for 31, 32 years, nobody's ever asked me what my degrees, my, my, my grades were. It's not important, is it? And that's never to impress you what they were. You know what? Who cares? Who cares what they were? Of course you want a man who knows what he's talking about. I'm not saying that. Of course a man should be well studied. I'm not saying that. But what is this cross going to do? When I stand in front of the cross, it's going to pale and, and pale in everything to what I know about who Jesus is. Who is the wise man? Who has the chokmah? The, the Hebrew word. Who, who, who has the ability to really say and do the right things? Now, every time, here's Paul speaking as a philosopher of the day. Interesting. What does a philosopher of the day do? He asks questions. This is the way of teaching. When Jesus was in the temple, lost, I put that in quotes. Do you know how they taught in the first century? So when Jesus was found, I put that in quotes again, by Mary and St. Joseph. Do you know what was happening? They were what would happen, their classroom would be like this. Anybody have any questions? And your class would be the questions. It wouldn't be someone standing up in front of you and pouring out knowledge to you because you're expected as a student to pre-read, to pre-study. And then we study what the meaning is. How many would like to have a class like that? How many know we would have no students at all? Because we're all into the machines and everything else. You would like you, you when you and I have gone to class. We sat down with a notebook and we took notes and we endured and we doodled and we got bored and we did homework and we crammed the night before for our exam. That was not that was not what Jesus encountered. Which, when they found Jesus, what were they doing? Jesus set the agenda for them, and they, Jesus was asking them questions. Jesus was asking them, "Here's my question." When they heard Jesus's question, they said, "Wow." Where did he get this? There, there are some good rare moments when I'm with the kids over in the school teaching them. When they ask, I said, wow, is that a great question? No, they're the typical questions. I've heard most of them. But now and then I get, wow, that's a real good one. And it makes me think. I said, boy, come up with a good answer now, Bill. Huh? <laughs> so, uh, and I, I give them the truth the best I can. Uh, so, Notice now, in, in these verses, verse 20 and following, notice Paul uses the first century question. Who's the wise man? Where's the wise man? Now, is everybody here wise? You are wise if you know Jesus Christ and how to go to heaven tonight. Are you all wise? Okay. Next he says there, where is the scribe? Who's the scribe? Somebody who does what? Writes down. Who, who is the scholar among you? Who's the one taking note? So Paul now is going very much into his Greek format because this is in Greece, isn't it? This is in Acacia. This is in the southern. Next thing he says there, where is the debater of this age? Now what would they do? They would take a teaching and what would they do? You can see in Acts 17, the Areopagus. Is there a real resurrection? And sadly, most of them believed no, following Plato and Aristotle and everything else. So they would stroke their beards and 
Aristotle did not have a, a, a nice, uh, a nice uh, death, did he? He had what drink uh, hemlock and uh, Socrates, I'm saying, Socrates, and so that's it. Socrates did not have a nice death. He had to drink poison because of some of his belief system. A nice way to go, isn't it? Boop, boop, gone. Okay. So what would they do? They would engage in debate. And so when was the last debate? It was Pilate saying to Jesus, what is the truth? And Jesus says, basically, I'm the truth. And the truth, aletheia in Greek means, I'm the way to know the Father. So now Paul poses these questions. And has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? What's the purpose of this world? All the kids go to college, right? You know why they go to college? To get a job. And are they getting jobs? No. When you leave college, they're broke. The average kid is going to leave college owing 100,000 American pesos. Isn't that great to start your life with when you're 23, 24 years old? Owing 100 grand and you don't have a job. And in six months, you get the little tickets to start paying it back. Isn't that great? And then what did they do? Do you know it's reported among a lot of college students, here's what they said. We have plagiarized, we have cheated in college just because we want a job. They have, that's what they have said. The survey said we have cheated. We have cheated because, yes, we, we just, we, we don't want the knowledge that they give us. And the knowledge of the world here in the United States is to tell the kids there is no God. Amen. If you've seen that movie recently, God is Not Dead. A great film. I, I would recommend it. So here we can see Paul with all the debaters and saying, <coughs> God is going to make foolish. And I love, I love one of the scenes in God is Not Dead. The student said to the teacher, great line. He says, why are you so angry with God? And the teacher said, because when I was a youth, he took my father. And then he says, I love the line, why are you mad at someone you don't believe in? <laughs> Great line. That was my favorite line in the movie. Why are you mad at somebody you don't believe in? And uh, that's why there, I don't believe there's really atheists out there. It's just misplaced anger at at this deity they think mm -hmm. is all good and puff the magic dragon is supposed to be there for you. Mm -hmm. But you and I want to live our lives our way. That's why God's not there for you because you want your life your way. Mm -hmm. When you decide, as Paul says in Galatians 2.20, I don't live but Christ crucified this in it. When you're there because it's God's way for you <coughs> and that's Christianity, mm -hmm. then, you can, then you can have these questions answered. So do you see those questions? And those same questions are going on today, aren't they? The next line there, he says, verse 21. For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom. We can't get it. Now, go all the way back, please, to the book of Proverbs. Who wrote Proverbs? Solomon. Very good. I answered my own questions. Proverbs What's that? Proverbs 1. Proverbs 1 is good. But I, but I was going to Proverbs 8 and 9. Proverbs 1. Go to Proverbs 9. Now, now the Hebrew word, the Hebrew word for wisdom is chokmah. Everything good word. <laughs> and in uh, Greek it's Sophia and Hebrew it's chokmah. So let's look at the Chukma, okay? Go with me please to Proverbs 9. Chukma. We're looking at the wisdom of God. Wisdom, and, and this is God's wisdom. Everybody with me in, in, in Proverbs 9? Yes. Okay. Wisdom has built herself a house. How many live in Wisdom House? <laughs> And she has set up her seven pillars. Seven is the name of fullness. So guess what will happen? Will it collapse? What's going to happen to all of man's wisdom? It's foolish. All those degrees? 
I got my PhD degree, I got my MOUSE degree. <laughs> who cares? Right? You know who I like better than all those PhD degrees? Give me St. Teresa Lejeune in the same room with me. 24 and she's gone. Give me St. Anthony of Padua, 36, he's gone. Give me St. Faustina, 39, she's gone. I want to be in the room with them. Those are my PhD people, right? Please don't ever be impressed with somebody's degrees. I told you my mother's favorite theology is if you don't know how to use a hammer, you're dumb. <laughs> See these two hands? They prayed over many a toilet. <laughs> I didn't know what the heck why it was running. I kicked it, I jiggled it, I jaggled it. I'm not a plumber. My mother yells at me, fix it! I said, I didn't take plumbing 101. <laughs> to this day, when I get into a car, I just put the key in and say, work! <laughs> I don't know the mechanics of it. I don't know how it works. Or I don't ask questions. If it works, I'm quite content. If it stops, I just lay hands on the machine and say, work! <laughs> One day I was leaving the seminary. It was four below zero. And all the seminarians, this Saturday, we're all taking a day off after our studies, and uh, nobody can get their car started. So I went out, and they see me. Hello, hello. And I started praying over my car. Lord, I need to get out of here today. I just need to go home and see my mother's okay, and I need to get out of here. And so I prayed over it. And they would say, no cars are working. I put my key in, boom. I rolled down the window. Prayer works. <laughs> and then I took off and I went home and they're still out there. They're probably still out there today. So wisdom has seven pillars. What do you think of pillars? Solomon's writing this. What do you think? The temple. The temple standing. What's the temple? How many know the pillar has the temple has two main pillars, just and Boaz? Which means the strength of God. So what are the pillars? The sevenfold gifts of the Spirit. Isaiah 11, 2. So how many want the gifts of the Spirit? You see, we need to tap into the Holy Spirit during this age because we haven't tapped into Him yet. I'm, I'm convinced you believe in Him, but I'm convinced we haven't tapped into Him. So notice here, underline that. She has slaughtered her beast. She has mixed her wine. She has also set her table. So what does wisdom do? It knows how to live. You know how to eat when, you got, when you're wise. She has sent out her maids to call from the highest places in the town. Get wisdom. It's the beginning, uh, right? Beginning of all your understanding. It means you know how to live. Most people you and I are going to encounter the rest of your life, they don't know how to live. They're on survival mode. Why do you think they're telling you, I'm hanging in there? <laughs> hanging. <laughs> I'm hanging. Now, if I read the Bible correctly, Jesus says, you, he's Italian, Abodanza. <laughs> now, how many people are you going to meet? They say, Abodanza. Hey, what are they saying? I'm hanging. I'm getting by. They don't got wisdom. Next, next wisdom says there, whoever is simple let him turn in here isn't that great mm. <coughs> every time in the Bible Jesus says come every time he says come Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28 it means wisdom it means I like the expression turn in here turn into my sacred heart and we have the sacred heart of Jesus soon right Mac of America turn in here this is where you turn to him who is without sense he says come there's wisdom right there Come, eat of my bread. Now, how do you say bread in Hebrew? Do you remember that? Lechem. What word do we get? Beth? Lechem. Come get bread. <coughs> now, there's a crisis hitting the world and the church, and it's going to be unfolding day by day. Here's what I promise you. You and I say the Our Father every day. Don't get nervous. You're all going to eat every day because you are righteous people. 
I didn't say steak every day. <laughs> but you're going to eat every day. If you're righteous, God's going to take care of you, okay? What's, what's coming down the pike is going to be very interesting. So come, turn in here. This is the wisdom. And come eat my bread and drink of the wine I have mixed. Leave simpleness and live and walk in the way of insight. That's wisdom. To, that I know how to live my life. I'm not going to college to get a degree so I can get a six-figure job. But how many know a lot of people are going there to get a six-figure job? And what's happening to them? Their souls are empty. Sister Heaven. So actually, because he is the bread of life, he's actually, every time he calls, um, every time he says to come, he's saying to come to him. Yes. Yes, back with me to Corinthians as we wrap up tonight. Good stuff? Yes. My okay. time goes so quick, huh? For since uh, verse 21, I, I want to get done, but I'm not going to do that, but that's okay. I, I, want, I want us to enjoy the text. Are you enjoying the yes, text? Yes, yes. For since of the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom. So right now, the world can't figure out God. So what's the, how many know right now in the United States, atheism is climbing unbelievably? You have your sons and daughters and grandchildren not baptized, say, I don't believe in God. I hear little kids come out, I don't believe in God. I hear little Christian kids go into public schools. I don't believe in God. How many know there, again, praise God, there is one or two kids that bucked the trend of their, their school valedictorians. And you know what they did? Pray. You know what they did in front of hundreds of people? They talked about their Christian faith. And, how many, and they were told not to do that. And they did. Right. Well, and what are they going to do? They got their diploma? <laughs> Run out now, baby, all right? Whoa. And how many know that, that if you want to see that, you can see on CNN, they, 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 buck, they buck the trend. They said, you're not going to tell me what to say. Whoa. You know who my wisdom is? It's God. And so Paul goes on to say there, it pleased God through the folly of what we preach to save those who believe. So the preaching of the word of God now, what, what, did we, what, what expression do we have? <coughs> we have an expression called the message or the word. I got, I got to say something so amazing. And this is why I got to keep going. I don't want to get ever anybody upset. But if I'm going to preach the gospel, I'm going to get a lot of people upset. Right? Mm -hmm. How many know I have a lot of enemies too? But you know what? What's going to prove who I am? That I keep going. Because if my enemies are victorious over me, I quit. I stop. I'm not stopping. Jesus died on the cross for me. I believe that and I'm going. There are moments I don't want to go anymore. There's moments I want to go to the Cayman and stay there until he comes. Okay? I want to get pan tostado. That means to I want to be toast on the beach. <laughs> but that, that's not me. That's not what God called me to be. Now, when you have the word of the cross or the message, when the word of the cross goes out, here's what I'm saying to us. It has an innate power. Have you ever heard that word before? Yes. What does innate mean? A born in power to it. <coughs> that means I am so privileged by God and I thank you for listening. Daily I get to preach the gospel in this place. Of course I want to go hours longer but I got to keep it shorter. <laughs> I have my, well, oh, this goes too long. I said, sit down. I got something to share with you. Sit down. <laughs> Amen? Amen. So I have the, in, when I preach the word correctly, or just read the Bible. Now, when I read the Bible, it's the perfect word of God. When I explain it, it's called the rhema. Is my preaching perfect? No. But that's what you hear. You're saying to me, and I thank you, I want to hear 
what you have studied this means, give me something to apply it to my life. When I preach it correctly, guess what happens? There's a power that leaves. That little boy said, and heaven is for real, he told his father, he said, Dad, when you preach on Sunday, there's a light shaft coming upon you. It comes right from heaven. And then the power of God goes forth. I like that. I like to think when I'm here at beautiful downtown Middletown St. Mary's, I like to think there's a shaft of light on me. And you're hearing the word of God. Now, when I preach the word of God to you, the word of the cross, the message of the cross, does everybody in the world believe it? No. What, is, what did they say? That's ridiculous. Because here's what I believe. I am a fool. I believe my Savior died 2,000 years ago and He's alive right now. <laughs> How many know that's kind of a foolish thing to say? Mm -hmm. Someone that lived 2,000, He's alive right now. Come on. Where is He? Where is He? Show me Him and I'll believe. But I know when I preach the Word of God, there's a power that leaves. And this is called the born again in power of the word I deliver. Which means this. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12 to 14. It means I have the power, God gives me the, the power of the words to bring somebody to God. The greatest joy up to my life of 32 years is to hear somebody say, you made a difference in my life. Going through what I went through this past year, I'm not here, from another place. People have said, you don't know how many people's lives you've touched. Mm -hmm. And that has encouraged me to keep going because the enemy wanted to stop me. So I know that when I preach the word of God and people like you say, I've heard what you're saying and it's changing my life to come closer to Jesus. Like, yes, I can keep going. So the word of God is folly to those. It's ridiculous. Morose, morose, moronic. It's like throwing pearls. It's, it's pearl of his worst wine. But guess who they call the fool? The world will say, you are a fool. And I say to you, I'm a fool of Jesus Christ. I'm going to keep doing this to the day I die. And you're not stopping me. Because my coffin is already rigged. <laughs> I'm going to proclaim Jesus Christ with every breath in me. So when I speak the word of God, some hearers out there are going to say, This is, I don't like this. They may get up and walk out. I haven't seen much. I've seen now and then one or two have got up and walked out. When we get in moral issues, how many know a lot more people will walk out? Because they don't, they said this is, they, they'll call you a phobic. And a phobic, phobeo means fear. But I must announce the gospel to all people. And I can't worry about the consequences. I've got to leave that to God. Is it hard for me to leave with God? Yes. Because in my flesh, I want to be a popular man. I want right now everybody to like me. But if I'm following Jesus Christ, that cannot be. That cannot be. I have decided to give my life to Jesus Christ. And I'm not stopping. I've gone too far. I'm probably now on my second leg of life. I don't think I'll, I'll probably make it to 120. It's possible. It's possible. But I, I, I don't foresee that. I think I have more years less than I do. I think I live more years than I do have years remaining. And that's okay. That's okay. So you see what Paul's saying? If it please God through the folly of what we preach to save those. So my words going forth have a power to get into every single person. Now here's the good news. My thoughts are not your thoughts. Isaiah 55. Here's the good news. Every word that you and I preach, everybody heard them. I can be guaranteed one, one thing. I don't care what, if somebody said, I don't believe you, I, I, I like what you said, I don't like what you said. I heard it. You heard it. You heard the word tonight. You all heard it. 
and I'm gonna, my face is gonna haunt you to the day I die. <laughs> <laughs> and how many know? Because because you're here, and I thank God for you and all those listening around the world right now to this broadcast. I'm gonna say I told you, and you heard the truth. Inside the words of the gospel is in a power to change. So as mothers and fathers that many of you are, don't ever say again, my sons and daughters didn't hear, hear a word I said. They heard every word you said. Now, what they didn't do is accept it and give you a hug right away. Because when you and I present the gospel of Jesus Christ, what happens is this. You've got to understand our human nature. When I, if I want to follow Jesus, I've got to change. You see, I think this life of mine is my life. And so when the power of the Holy Spirit comes on and says, Bill, you've got to change. I don't want to do that. I like my life. So a teenager will say, leave me alone. It's my life. Why are you hounding me? It's my life. Leave me alone. I don't need you. And then the teenager rises, early 20s. Anybody know that story? <laughs> And the fights in the houses will go on. Did they hear you? Absolutely. Do you got to keep going? Absolutely. Do you shut down? If it's your house, you never shut down. You say, let me show you about a door. You turn the handle. I will open it. You're free to walk out. Because this house is for Jesus and Mary. Do you need help packing? <laughs> Are you getting it? I don't want them to go, but I can't compromise who he is. Because my salvation is at stake. Whether I really believe. I've gone too far, and I pray God I'm not giving up Jesus ever in my life. He's done too much for me. He has died for me. And he's given me eternal life. I'm not going to blow it. Because in a blink of an eye, I am out of here. <laughs> and I want to be with him forever and ever and ever. Amen? Amen. So, and finally, verse 22. I love verse 22. Jews demand signs and Greeks seek wisdom. Now, there's an expression that Paul uses. We're done. A little over time. I'm sorry. There's Greeks and Jews. This expression, Greeks and Jews, is Paul's way of saying the whole world. Greeks are the educated. Stroke in their proverbial beard. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Nicodemus coming to Jesus. Hmm. Hmm. How many have a few hmm or saying here? Hmm. Hmm. The Jews say to Jesus, give me a sign. Do you remember that? And then we will believe. Now, interesting, and I'm done. We'll continue next week, Lord willing. In the Bible, the Jews want to see everything up close. before they believe. The Greeks, like Jairus in John 6, the Greeks are able to say, say the word and I'll believe it. Which are you? Probably we're a little bit of both. Show me. What are you, from Missouri? Show me. And I'll believe. In Mark 8, Jesus said to those who said, show me, he went like this, I'll give you the loose Hebrew. Oh, 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 did you get the Hebrew? Yeah. <laughs> Anybody know how to say that word in Hebrew? Oh, I'm sure you say that word every day. Oh, oh, oh. And you know what? I'm doing it mild because it got really loud. Oh. Anybody ever hear that Hebrew word before? <laughs> you like that Hebrew word, don't you? <laughs> now the Greeks will say, <laughs> 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 
I'm, I'm stroking my beard, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> Which are you? Stay tuned next week. Now, next week is the fair. So I, I, I don't know, there'll be parking here. So we'll meet in the church next week and then go to the fair afterwards and get a hot dog. Okay? Chapel? Yeah, the chapel. Oh, okay. okay. The chapel. Yeah, the chapel. Yeah, the now, we can meet upstairs because it's getting warmer and the air condition is on upstairs. Okay? okay. So we can start to do that too. So uh, we'll, we'll post around. So we're going to meet in the church next week, which I put a little chapel. note there. Yeah. The chapel. The chapel. The fair will be going on. And please participate and have a good time. And I'll be walking around. And, uh, I'm trying to lose weight, so I, I may not I'll have a hot dog without the bun. <laughs> Okay. Good stuff. Good yes. 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 Thank you. If you want to hear this again, we're on. We're online. God's Word Alive today. Okay. And uh, a lot of a lot of hits are coming. Um, we, we've been in sixty countries. We hope someday to live stream things again, where people around the world will be joining us right in the Bible study. Hopefully the technology will be back up where they can start to call us in and we'll, we'll, we'll have you meeting people from around the country, literally around the country, which we already have that technology. If anybody knows how to do that and help us, we'd be happy. If not, we'll... There's a website we'll... you can go to. What's that? There's a website you can go to and I don't remember what it's called because we used Well, you better remember <laughs> before you leave I remember town. and I'll text you. Okay, good. <laughs> good. So, and all you do is you hook up the did camera. Did you, you like Corinthians? Yeah. Yeah. Isn't, it, isn't it good yeah. stuff? Yeah. So now also too, we've done Revelation. It's all online. And also I did a series on heaven. Uh, uh, if anybody wants the CDs on that, we'll get that. And I'm just doing two new series on discipleship and on another series on the Holy Spirit. I, I did a series, 30 CDs on the Holy Spirit, and I did an, I'm starting a brand new series on the Holy Spirit. And last night was off the charts on the power of the Holy Spirit. So uh, if you want those studies, they're online today. Two already on the Holy Spirit, two on discipleship. We got, um, I was in a cloister monastery with uh, a cloistered um, uh, Carmelites. And so if you want to hear about a lady of Mount Carmel and all those teachings, that's online for you too. Okay? So we, we just want you to click in because we, we want the, uh, the site to go to higher usage. That's all. So, Brother? Next week is the basement of the chapel. No, it's top of the, no, right in the chapel. In the chapel. No, 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 right because they moved no. the adoration. adoration goes up there. The Eucharist was moved oh. there on, okay, on, the on Monday. Thing. When it's, okay. when it's oh. the fair. Oh, okay. They have that the little basement. church. We'll, we'll, we'll catch it over there. All right. Okay. okay. So okay. The, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Twelve. Yeah. I'm doing the healing of the family yeah. tree. I think it's extremely By the way, if anybody wants CDs and everything else on the healing of the family tree and deliverance will send up. That's kind of it. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you for the Word of God. And help us to be wise. The Sophia, help us to receive the, the power and the wisdom of God to live, not in debating with humanity, but to show them who Christ really is for us. In Jesus, the world calls us foolish men and women because we choose to believe that you are alive and you are coming again. We don't know the day or the hour, but we live in that holy expectation. Save this church, Lord. Redeem us and renew us in the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory be to the Father. Amen. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Next week, Lord willing, we'll be across the street downstairs. Okay. <laughs>